Good morning! This video is an introduction to the Hayson Trail and my plans to walk it. The Hayson Trail is located in Australia. It is the longest dedicated hiking trail in Australia. It is just over 1100 kilometres long and goes from Parachilna Gorge, 400 kilometres north of Adelaide, to Cape Jervis on the south coast, which is 100 kilometres south of Adelaide. The trail showcases the diversity of South Australia, passing through rugged and isolated ranges and gorges, native bushland, dusty outback, pine forests, vineyards, farmland and coastal areas. Most of the hike is graded classes 4 and 5 of the Australian Walking Tracks classification, so it's not easy going. There are 14 towns on trail and another 14 towns within 10 kilometres of the trail. There are 49 campsites or huts directly on the trail and a few more within 2 kilometres of the trail. Most of these campsites have water tanks. The trail passes through the land of seven traditional owners, the Naranjiri, the Kauna, the Permank, the Nadujuri, the Nakunu, the Bengala and the Adnamathanha tribes. Once again, I apologise. I apologise for my poor pronunciation of these names. I would like to thank these tribes for allowing us to experience their lands. The trail is for walkers only and can be walked in either direction. On average, it takes between six to eight weeks to complete. Through hikers are called end-to-enders, whether they are doing it in one journey or spread over several years. The trail is closed in summer due to the risk of fires. The closure dates change in three sections with the north closed by the 1st of November, the middle on the 15th of November and the southern section closed from the 1st of December. If it's a dry winter and spring the trail may close earlier. If the trail is walked northwards the best time to walk it is from April to July which gets the milder autumn months in the south and arrives in the moderately temperate winter of the hotter north. This direction is also easier to start with as the trail is flatter and easier to navigate than the more remote and rougher northern end. If the trail is walked southwards, the best time is from August to November. This benefits from the cooler weather in the north and has the best chance of the rainwater tanks being full. As you head further south, the warming weather is offset by the cooler climate in the southern sections. The added bonus is the spring wildflowers. The trail was first suggested by Warren Bonython in 1969, but the design was stalled by several years due to government politics and issues with private landowners. The first nine kilometres in the Cleland Conservation Park was opened in 1976. In 1978, the Department of Tourism, Recreation and Sport gave the task of trail development to Terry Lavender and a further 50 kilometres between Mount Lofty and Mount Magnificent was opened. Terry Lavender designed and oversaw the majority of the trail construction for the next 14 years and the trail was complete in 1993. The development of the trail was made possible by the support of the state government district and local councils, numerous volunteers and over 500 individual landowners. The trail is named after the German-born Sir Hans Hasen and he is a well-known Australian artist, particularly recognised for his watercolours of the Australian bush and his strong associations with both, with both the Mount Lofty and Flinders Ranges. His house, the Cedars, is located on the trail near Handorf and the Adelaide Hills. The reason I chose the Hayson Trail. I wanted to through hike for two to three months and after estimating the Bibliman track would take me five to six weeks, I was looking for another hike that would take around six weeks. The two options I considered were the Hayson Trail and the Australian Alps Walking Track, known as the AAWT. This trail is 650 kilometres but much harder than the Hayson Trail. At a significantly more elevation, averaging 46 metres of elevation gained per kilometre. 
compared to 24 for the Hasten Trail and 18 for the Bibliman Track. The other issue with AAWT is that it's much more difficult logistically and requires a hiring a car to place food drops along the trail. Given the short time between deciding to do the trail and starting, this put the AAWT off the list and I chose the Hasten Trail. The Hasten Trail is a bit tougher than the Bibliman Track, which is ideal as I'll have five weeks walking under my belt before starting it. The resupply is easy with towns along the trail. The longest resupply is the first one, which is six days, and the rest are between three and five days each. I'm estimating I'll be starting around the 7th of October, and that will take me between 34 and 38 days to complete. Another reason I chose the Hasten Trail as it's got different flora and fauna from the Bibliman track. I am hoping to see kangaroos, yellow-footed rock wallaby, echidnas, wombat, koalas, dingo, red fox, guanas, flying fox, seals and dolphins. And of the birds, I'm looking forward to seeing the sea eagles and the different types of parrots, such as the galahs and cockatoo and colourful rainbow lorikeets. One of the parks I go through is the Deep Creek Conservation Park and this has no less than 400 different plants and 100 bird species just in that one park. And because there's such a variety of terrain, each of the different parks I go through have different things. In the Flinders Range in the north, there are around 60 different lizard species. There are five species of venomous spiders in South Australia and another nine species, which, while not venomous, have painful bites, which may cause reactions. There are two species of scorpions, but these are just painful but not dangerous if stung. And there are 15 species of venomous snakes and a whole lot of other non-venomous snakes. Some of the not-so-fun parts of this trail are issues with availability of water. If it's a dry spring, there may be low water levels and some of the tanks may be dry, meaning I have to carefully plan for my water. Also, I'm well aware that this trail is not a wilderness trail. While there are several sections in the national parks which will be remote and untouched, I know the trail traverses a lot of farmland and vineyards. There are long sections of road walking and following fence lines, and also long sections of following creek beds. Accommodation will also be an issue. There is no camping on private lands, which mean there will be more times we'll have to stay in commercial accommodation, so there will be a bigger hit to my budget for this. It will also affect the distance I walk, with the possibility of walking more or less than I would naturally want to. And the final thing I'm not looking forward to is the insects, flies, sandflies, ticks, mosquitoes and midges, which I expect to be really annoying. I am aware of other through hikers who have not enjoyed the Hasten Trail, mainly due to the road walking, farmland and creek walking. I am approaching the trail fully expecting to be bored with sections. To me, that is part of the uniqueness of the trail and I try and take the bad with the good. The road walking allows me more time for daydreaming and cranking out the big miles. And I fully expect the overall experience of the trail will be enjoyable and I am looking forward to it.